Hi, I'm Scott Patrick, designer with the casting product development team here at Rio Grande. In this video, I'll be showing you how to generate toolpaths using the MeshCam software that came with your Nomad CNC mill. Let's get started. Here's MeshCam. All we need to do is go to our open icon in order to select an STL file that was created in another program. The program will ask if you want to use inches or millimeters. You'll want to choose whichever units you use when creating the file. I use millimeters, so we're OK. Notice that we have the option to do a three-axis cut or a two-sided cut. Today, we're going to do two-sided machining. Now, there are seven tools we'll be using. Let's start with the Define Stock. You can see that the software already knows the X, Y, and Z dimensions of our piece. If I was going to do a three-axis cut, I would go ahead and click OK. But since we're doing a two-sided cut, I want to add a little extra room around our piece. I'm going to add three and a half millimeters to the left, right, back, and front borders. I'm also going to center X, Y, and Z. This will make our working area a little larger in order to fit bigger tools and put some supports in. Notice we've now got a little more room around our piece. Here's where we choose the sizes of our supports. Then it's just a matter of clicking where we want to add them to our geometry. If we add a support that we don't want, we can simply right click and move it to where we do want one. Our next button is retract height. This is how high your cutter tool will rise above your cutting area. I usually go with about two millimeters. Program zero is very important. This is where your zero in MeshCam has to match the zero on your cutting material in your Nomad mill. For this piece, we want our Z position to be in the middle of our stock with our X and Y set at zero. Putting the zero right in the middle of our model will make it easy to find on the mill. Next is set maximum depth. Since we're cutting halfway through our stock, we're going to choose the halfway down position and OK. Then we'll choose the machining region. I'm choosing to draw a rectangle from corner to corner. Our final steps are here under the Generate Toolpath button. Let's enable a roughing pass using a large ball end mill. Click Select Tool to find the tool you want from Nomad's tool library. In this case, I'm going to select the 8th inch ball end mill that came with my Nomad, and then I'm choosing to copy over the tool's parameters. This gives us a very rough cutting without much detail, so we're going to enable a finishing pass by clicking this checkbox. I'm going to make a cut along X because that's more efficient for this piece. It won't have to make as many U-turns. Here, I'll choose a finishing tool that I added to the library. I set up its parameters to cut wax. Some of these other strategies can be very quick and useful depending upon what you're making. If you want more information on finishing passes like waterline and pencil cleanup, along with recommended cutting parameters, visit carbide3d.com. If you prefer a slightly simpler process, you can always try using the automatic toolpath wizard. This feature will help you quickly determine toolpath options based on your desired speed, accuracy, and quality. Now we'll simply click OK and wait for the toolpath to generate. The amount of time it takes to generate the toolpath is based upon the complexity, fineness, and size of your piece. Since we're creating a very fine toolpath with very high detail, this one will take a bit longer to generate. Now we get to review the generated toolpath. In order to see the toolpaths better, 
I'm going to hide the selected toolpaths from our view. I've put a check mark under rough operation to isolate that toolpath. The rough operation will only take about a minute and a half. These lines show the path of the cutting tool. It doesn't look like we needed a waterline finish. Our parallel finish, however, is what really adds the detail to the piece. This step is very important and will probably take about half an hour. Then our pencil finish will only take a little over a minute. In order to get all of these toolpaths to cut, make sure that each one is checked before you save your complete toolpath. This will also give you a total estimated time for the piece. This one will take about 37 minutes. Last but definitely not least, this is your one chance to save your toolpath, so be sure to click Save before you click Done. All right, now we're going to use a photograph to create a 3D relief and a toolpath to go with it. Let's hit Open and find an image. Our first window shows our options for size. You'll notice it defaults to 1 inch or 25 millimeters in the X direction, while the Z thickness defaults to 0.1 inch or 2.5 millimeters. That's a little too thick for this project, so I'm going to make it 1.5 millimeters. If I wanted to make this bigger or smaller in the X and Y directions, I could change those as well. Now our height mapping is important. We have the option of making the black in the image a Z minus, which would be recessed, or a Z plus, which means the black would be raised. On this, I'm going to choose black as the Z minus, so the white and the highlights will be at the upper levels and the grays will get darker from top to bottom. When you're ready, hit OK. You may get a warning here about excessive memory, but in most cases, you can go ahead and select Yes. Your image may need some smoothing due to pixelation, and you'll want to play around with the smoothing button. Remember, the more you soften the image, the less detail you'll get. All right, now that we have this image as smooth as we like, we'll leave the retract height at 2 millimeters, just like we did before. Again, where we set our Z position is very important. For a picture file, I find it simple to put Z at the top center because it's easy to find on your material on the Nomad. Let's set the maximum depth all the way to the bottom. We select the machining region just like we did before. I'm going to use the rectangle tool and I'll click inside the image so the Nomad will only cut the part inside the rectangle. Let's generate our toolpath. We're not cutting very deep, so I'm not going to enable a roughing pass this time. Instead, I'm just going to cut along X with my chosen tool and hit OK. All right, in a few minutes, we'll be able to take a peek at our toolpath. Now we can hide our geometry and see our toolpath in 3D. Make sure the toolpaths we want to use are checked so we can get the estimated cutting time. Finally, remember to save your toolpath before hitting done. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, contact the experts at Rio Grande.